No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to be there. She's every chance she goes close if you're not there. If she's there, I'm afraid there's not a Scoobies. Hello and welcome along to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. The Grand National has been and it's gone. How did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was a great couple of days. The Angie Festival, the preceding couple of days have gotten better over the last couple of years as well. Uh, the, the National itself is always a fantastic spectacle. You've gone and put up a little 50 to 1 bifter for a few of the subscribers as well, which is very nice to know. I don't know still how any second now got beat looking at the race back multiple times, but uh, that, that's, the, I suppose, the way it is. There was a few, obviously, um, hard stories to take on Saturday's racing. You know, sometimes that that is going to happen. And uh, obviously, a horse close to my heart in Discorama not being with us anymore was, was di disappointing and difficult to watch. But uh, that, unfortunately, is the game we're in. And the first three days still were, were so good quality-wise. And it was just great to see some of these horses come out and, and reproduce after John. There were some lows. Noble Yates was a high. Was there another high for you? The likes of Three Stripe Life and Jolino Bella, who were both pretty confident about. Yeah, well, Jolino Bella was, was brilliant from a, a betting perspective, having both put them up at, at 11-1. to 1 And I suppose Manella Crooner came out of the race, I think, the, the afternoon after we recorded, which helped uh, massively there. But... Uh, three Stripe Life, I think, getting his day there, he's just been a horse we've both been almost in love with all year, and you're kind of hoping that he wasn't going to be one of these horses that just keeps finding ways to come on second or third, but he, he went and did the job superbly, jumped super, and just can't wait to see him over a fence next year. I do agree, I'm looking forward to seeing him over a fence, and he could be some, some staying chaser, he's got all the, the right credentials to be just that. This video we are going to be previewing the Fairy House Easter Festival, is that what it's called, the Fairy House Easter Festival? That's the one, yep. Yeah, is it something that you'll be going to? No, I'm, a, I'm unfortunately away this weekend, I'm over in, in your part of the land, I'm going on my Easter trip with the folks to York so I'll be at uh, York City versus Spennymore Town on Friday afternoon now that is <laughs> top quality action if there's anyone from York uh, that wants to go to that game you can uh, hop along <laughs> another thing to tell you about is uh, we had a few questions asking will we be at Punchestown unfortunately not but we will be together because we're going to we're, we're going to have a little treat we're going to Cyprus with a couple of the other lads the likes of Dan Overall the tip star champion I'm sure you're looking forward to bumping into him yeah Dan great guy you know obviously seems to be able to win the tip star competition back in a faller and I un uncover the toughest dove cut in years but uh, I swear I'm not bitter <laughs> can you tell uh, yeah so we're looking forward to that it's going to be great fun it could be quite a messy one as well so we're trying to think it's punches town week we'll be watching the racing out there if uh, you would like a vlog, and there's never been a vlog on the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel before, but a vlog of that week, what we get up to, as well as our live reaction to some of the racing at Punchestown, then do hit that like button. And if we get 300 likes on this video, we will do just that. So 300 likes, and we will make a Cyprus vlog. Uh, more of a travel content, not something that we're going to do regularly, but it could be good fun. Anyway, let's then preview Fairy House. And Fairy House starts on Saturday, but there's not a particular race that we want to preview so we've had a look at the card and we're going to highlight a couple of horses that we do like yeah so i suppose it's a little bit of an underwhelming start to the meeting at fairy house there's a maiden hurdle to start with and a couple of tricky handicaps in there i think there's a hunter chase in there as well the race that i'm interested in is the 415 the three mile novice handicap hurdle just two horses that i'm not sure whether both of them are going to run or not one that i've put up on this channel a couple of times daily present and he's won both times i've put him up i think he's better than a handicapper i'm not sure whether they're going to leave uh, his last run of the season for this or maybe take on a grade one at Punchestown and the other is Barry Connell's horse My Immortal who's a very very rapidly improving staying handicapper he's going to be a, a good staying handicap chaser down the line he'll be off the bridle he's a bit of Bardenstown lad ilk he's off the bridle very early but he stays very well and I think the two of them are both ahead of their marks if they were to take up the engagement I quite like one and it is in the Hunter Chase and it's a horse that I've been banging on about this year that didn't run in the uh, the Fox Hunters at Cheltenham and that's Vorslet. The stable did so well with Wing Leader who finished second just chinned by Bill away so I'm hoping Vorslet can put up a good show and then one also worth watching and that's deeply superficial if she runs in the two and a half mile bumper she was a £385,000 purchase and I do think it's interesting that they're running her 
at this time of year. Maybe she goes hurdling next year and they just want to see her up in trip. They think the world of her and she could be an interesting young mare to follow, especially in something like the Mayor's Novice Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival. Let's focus then on Sunday and this is where the action really starts. Two grade ones on the card. It's really, really good stuff. The first grade one is the two and a half mile Mayor's Novices Hurdle. We've got a lot of the horses reopposing from Cheltenham, the likes of Love Envoir. Grangy. Brandy Love didn't run. We've got Party Central, who was disappointing. Is there anything in this that really sticks out, given the fact that they're all up in trip? Yeah, I think it's a difficult race to, to kind of solve. Very difficult to kind of make a, a, a lot of form line there from that Mayor's Novice Hurdle. It was part of that three or four race uh, card at the end of Thursday, where the English suddenly started running away with everything, and everyone was, well, certainly all the Irish punters there had their head in their hands. Uh, when Love Envo and the mayors at Novice, you're there going, geez, we've no chance here. Um, I'm not sure whether she's going to come over and, and, and run. I think the, the two and a half miles would suit her. I think the ground would need to soften up, though, for her to run. Grand G's a very good mayor. I know a few of my friends are, are involved in her, and uh, they're very you know, excited by the fact of her going up in trip. I just think perhaps at top, top grade one level, she is going to be the type of mayor that might find one or two too good. I'd be the forgiving type. I was all over Brandy Love for the Mayor's Novice Herd. That ended in tears, just like Buddy Rich for yourself. A stone bruise on the morning. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give her a chance that she's not going to do what she did earlier in the season at Fairy House and drift so markedly to her left that she uh, causes herself uh, as much problems as she did then. So she'd be my selection. It probably wouldn't be one of my strongest of the weekend, but uh, I, I think she's a classy mare. I think she might be a bit better than the ones that actually did run in the mayor's novels. It's interesting. I kind of look at that race and not really sure what what to make of it because I, I do think that Love Envoir is probably actually a two and a half miler. Is she classy enough? I doubted her at Cheltenham. She proved me wrong. And Grangy doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. I think she was staying up the hill at Cheltenham. Up in trip might be her bag. But again, I, I agree. I'm not sure she's a grade one horse. Brandy Love, I, I just struggled to warm to her. I know that she ran all over the shop and, and she probably ran extremely well considering that would just frighten the life out of me her antics the last day the fact she was jumping out violently to her left i'd actually probably give a notable mention to party central if she runs here for gordon elliott maybe up in trip might see the best of her and she she travels strong i'm going to stick with her especially if she's an each way price which i'd imagine she would be but one thing we do have to mention this simon manure and isaac suede horse night and day again unraced yet entered in a grade one she's clearly well highly thought of because she keeps getting these entries she's entered in the mayor's novice hurdle at cheltenham and then this if she runs here and gets beat she's still a novice for next year if she doesn't run here they want to keep her to be a novice next year and if she wins i almost think well fair enough she's just seriously good i know that she's been working with some extremely smart horses when willie galloped um the smart horses before the champion festival they think a lot of her night and day could be one long term towards Cheltenham next year 33 to 1 could be a big price anyway the next race is the uh, two miles a grade b handicap chase and my old pal buddy rich buddy stone bruise rich is entered here not going to side with him as much as i would love to see him win not going to side with him because i do think there's a w better handicapped horse in fighting fit who has won his last two starts i thought the last day at leopardstown was very good still think there's improvement off his mark of 126 and i think connections may have found another nice opportunity and a, and a bigger pot to win with him so jp manis fighting fit uh, in the two mile grey b handicap chase although it would be sour if buddy rich was to do me now what's your thoughts on this do you agree with fighting fit yeah I've, he's been a horse i've liked all season now uh, i think i've put him up the last twice as well on here i, I think he's a, a rapidly improving horse it was obviously a plot to get him down to a workable mark and i think just the way he won at leopard stand the last day a rated novice chase it was a trappy little race jumped well quickened up well and then when he hit the front he didn't do a whole pile and uh, he was given a fairly quiet ride from Luke Dempsey, hands and heels only, and still won snug by a length and a half. As a result, he hasn't been hit by too steep a rise, and I just, I've just i thought all season that there's been a big pot in him. I thought it would be maybe the two-mile handicap chase at the Dublin Racing Festival. They decided to skip that, and maybe they were looking for a little bit of better ground like they're going to get at Fairly House. So uh, he'd, be, he'd be my selection as well. Buddy Ritchie. 
he's an enigma at this stage, really. I think we've talked about him for so much, and yet he hasn't run for five months now or something. So he is, like, we're we're just pontificating at this stage. But, you know, you could be turning your back on a graded horse there, Josh, but I don't want to add, add further flames to the fire. Thing is, it'll be right-handed, it'll be quick ground. Downhill finish. I need to stop. I'm getting the mighty Don Zanza feelings. I need to, to stay away. Um, if he wins, he wins. If he doesn't, then get in there. The next race we're going to preview is the Boyle Sports Gold Cup Novice Chase over two and a half miles. It is a grade one. And the head of the market is Galapin de Champ. Do we think he's going to run? I wouldn't think so, no. Uh, I think they'll stay for the three mile one Novice Chase at Punchestown and probably test him over that trip over fences, just like they did at, at Punchestown last year in the three mile Novice Hurdle. I don't see why they'd uh, go against that. I must say I'm very, very strong here on Master McShee. Uh, I think he's a really good horse. I think he's run the last day. People will snub their nose at it. But a novice running in an open grade two at Navan over two miles, which is an inadequate trip, I thought he ran a storming race. He obviously was a very good second behind Gallop and Deschamps at the Dublin Racing Festival, form being well advertised, as we all know. And he won the grade one at Limerick over Christmas time. I just think everything's in his favour. And this race always goes to one of those horses that you may think is maybe not one of your altogether stars but Master McShee has proven himself this year to be a very solid grade one horse and I think he's the most solid like if Gallop and Deschamps obviously isn't there which is what I'm basing it off I think he's he's the best and I think he'll win well he's got Enigamin in the two mile division and Jack and Poursoir and Fernie Hollow as well Alaho in the two and a half mile division so they're kind of locked down he's got Monkfish coming back for the gold cup Albion Photo's probably getting on so I think you've got to see if Gallop and Deschamps can be a Gold Cup horse. And I suppose the best place to find out is Punchestown. It'll be interesting to see if Bob Ollinger goes there as well. There are a couple of young horses worth watching entered in the bumper. If they do run, Firefox being one of those. I know I mentioned him recently on a podcast. 280 grand store horse owned by the same owners as American Mike. Well related. I think he's a half brother to the boss's Oscar. And then also Rich Ritchie and uh, Willie have got another bumper horse called Dr. Eggman. Uh, he could be of interest to see if he runs. I hope Firefox doesn't run and we see him sometimes early autumn. Uh, so then he might be a champion bumper horse for next year. I think he's only four or he might be five. So he's still fairly young. Now, let's focus on racing on Monday. And the first race we're going to preview is the Grade 2 Juvenile Hurdle over two miles. This is a frightening race to look at from a betting point of view. Because there's no markets at the time of recording. And there isn't an awful lot splitting pretty much all all 12, 13, 14 entered. Some of these horses are so unexposed, you don't know how high they can get. Yeah, it didn't look a, a race that filled me with great optimism, I must confess, uh, for a grade two contest. Uh, Cara Len won a probably a similar enough race uh, in, in a grade three at Fairy House, two starts back. You'd have to think he'll take the all the beating if he re reproduces that form and the fourth at Cheltenham. Uh, he's going to be a very short price to do so, though, so I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know. Uh, just look at the rest of them. There's, there's really not a whole pile between them, and I know HMSC horse is in there. I wouldn't have had him down as being a graded horse myself. Uh, I thought he'd be a... You know, he's obviously a well-handicapped horse. He might win a big handicap at some stage, but... I was kind of thinking he had an each-way chance in this race, which isn't a great sign of the form we're dealing with, I don't think. And I'd have thought if proving what he's already proven this year in terms of form, a Carol N would take all the beating. But I would say could easily be 1-2, to 4-7 to seven to do so. If he's an each-way price... I'll back too bright. The next race we're going to preview is the Grade 2 Hurdle over two and a half miles. We've got the likes of Durasso in here. Just kind of proper solid horses. Not superstars, but solid horses that run their race in Grade 2s. I'd be willing to forgive St. Felicien for his run in the Coral Cup. Treacherous conditions, and I don't think the reputation he had going into the race was for no reason. I think they clearly thought he was a seriously talented horse. Maybe not up to champion hurdle quality, but two and a half miles... St. Felicien, it'd be his last run before going novice chasing next year. I hope he can bounce back to form. If they were all to run, which one would you back? Yeah, tough race. Um, I, I get what you're saying about St. Felicien. I just couldn't forgive him for the nace run two starts back. I thought he was really underwhelming. Um, so yeah, perhaps that step up in trip on better ground could be the, the unlocking of something. I'm sure there's a good horse in there. 
And uh, the Devil's Coachman's probably the the standard bearer, having won the Boyne Hurdle, beating Ashdale Bob. That form was decently enough advertised in the Carroll Cup. Uh, that being said, he, he was well beaten at Fairly House last year on decent ground, and I just wonder whether he wants a bit of a dig. Uh, so it's, that was slightly just perturbed me. Uh, a mare I've I've always been in love with, and she's been very fragile. It'd be lovely to see her, you know, run well in one of these big races. Is Santa Rosa? I don't know whether you saw her the other week when she came back at Limerick. She's absolutely different gravy, this horse, I think. Uh, but she, we can't get her on the track. She's uh, ran twice in the last two seasons. Uh, she's obviously going to be backing up after a long layoff. It could be hard, but I'd love her to, to run well and, and maybe run in one of these open graded races and see just how good she is. The next race is the equivalent over fences, grade two over two and a half miles. And Mellon, could he run? I think he's going to run in the three-mile race at the weekend. What about Janadil? Could he run here? Because I think if Janadil runs, surely his form is far too superior to these. Yeah, Janadil looks a little bit like Fakir Dudari in this race. You feel it, it could be his day if, if he does go and take it up. Uh, you know, he's been knocking against good horses at two and a half miles, three miles, and this might just be his ideal so therefore he probably would win he'd be favoured to do so if he was I think it's an absolute head wrecker of a race if he doesn't run because I don't know who on earth you back between Black Bow Easy Game you know it's, it's missing Royal Rendezvous being in there like hard lines in there all of these horses are good on their day but are also extremely flaky uh, also on their day so I wouldn't be I wouldn't be sure. If Janadil wasn't there, I might give Blackbow a tentative selection. He's in better form than some of them. Uh, but that would be as I say, it's an absolute head wrecker if you take Janadil out of it. Blackbow in a grade two over two and a half miles. I never thought I'd see the day. That's when you know a, a grade two over two and a half miles is weak. The following race, the final race we're going to preview is the Irish Grand National. And this is extremely competitive. There's some horses like Farkless have actually bypassed Aintree to run here this has been the plan all along you said that you've got two that you fancy yeah there's two and one i'm not sure whether he's going to run or not because he was an awful disappointment for me last week and it was enjoy dalen he obviously tipped up at the first in the national i don't know whether they will run i kind of feel why wouldn't they you know he's only ran up to the first and clunked us and down he went and that was the end of it um and it wasn't an overly hard fall or anything like that so if he ran he's 20 to 1 currently i think he's a well handicapped horse he was third in the race last year obviously and i think if a, a repeat of that off the weight he's at i would see him go close but my main one for the race because i think he's been laid out to the minute for this race is max flamingo uh, for Francis Casey, an unexposed novice, ran behind the likes of Gallop and Deschamps this year. He's run at Fairy House a number of times. He won at the Easter Festival last year in a handicap hurdle. He beat Bacardi's last year to get his confidence, or last time out to get his confidence up over fences. He ran in a handicap chase at Leopardstown two starts back. Uh, he was the most blatant non-jigger you'll ever see. I think they've been waiting to step him up in trip. Three mile five. I know he's now 10 to 1, so I've slightly missed the, the early nice prices, the 20 to 1s that were going around around a week ago, but I think he's very well handicapped, going right-handed is key to him. And with these connections, Francis Casey, he's a small number of horses, but when they have a good one and they're lining one up for one, they're usually not far wrong. I'd say Dennis O'Regan will be on him. There's an awful lot of boxes being ticked. The three horses that I like in the race are Farkless at 8 to 1. He's favourite. The market has found him, but he skipped the Aintree Grand National to run here. And then the other two, uh, one that is top weight, actually, in Franco de Port. He's almost ran two honestly this year, and that's he's almost paid the price for that, and he's gone up in the weights without winning. I do think he's just going to run a seriously good race here as well, and he's 20 to 1. This is his kind of trip, it is his kind of race, and they would have had this race in mind for a long time with him, no matter how high the weights are. 158, it might be too high, but I think Franco de Port can run well. Then the other one, a massive price he was a horse that you backed for the Kim Muir and that smoking gun of 40 to 1 if he was to run not so much as Chel uh, his Cheltenham run but the run before when he finished third that was eye-catching enough and I think a repeat of that he does go close here 40 to 1 
I think might be a too big. What's your thoughts on that? You've got a smirk on your face. Ah, look, smoke and gun. Like, it's like you with Buddy Rich. Like, it's a, a love story, but a, a love-hate story. I love to love him. He hates to love me. He is a good horse, though, on his day. He won the Porter's Den over course and distance as well. So I think if it was a nice ground, he'd have to have a chance. As, as you say, you've made a, a good case for him. I just don't know whether I could properly trust him after the Kim Muir. But I don't know about the Kim Muir. Like, the Kim Muir, the pertemps that day. Per Gordon's gone into both races with stacks of chances and none of them came close so you're kind of going like I still believe the likes of Falcano, Tully Begg, Frontal Assault, Smoking Gun I think they're all still well handicapped but kind of they didn't run their race for whatever reason and if Smoking Gun comes and does Max Flamingo on the line I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> oh god if we had a uh a camera in your room as you're watching that race would that would just be absolutely brilliant and if you forgive the Kim Muir run and go on what he did before given the fact that that day was so messy with the Irish runners and, and Gordon Elliott's horses did generally disappoint like Gordon Elliott's going to be doing all he can to win the Irish Grand National and he might be a serious start for him if he's 40 to 1 it might be a big price uh, to place and I'm sure you can get five six places uh, at numerous bookmakers now it's time for our best bets uh, before we do go and i've got two two from haydock on saturday the first being in the 319 and i like zabil champion for john joe o'neill now he's a smart flat horse couldn't quite believe he got a mark of 116 over hurdles back in a race like this he could go close and zabil champion not sure what price is going to be and then the other one is at 501 and it's as you can see there with the red silks it's under the senior in the mare's chase final down to a mark of 113 she was at a high of 121 she won a couple of races she prefers quicker ground the one slight reservation is haydock fences but she jumps quite well i just get the sense and i don't know i don't know but i get the sense there's been a bit of a plan with her she's ran in some competitive races ran well but not shown her best ability. We go to a big race, it's worth 50 grand. I think Vienna Court's going to run, and she obviously won one of the big handicap chases at Cheltenham this year. If she's a big price, or an each way price, I wouldn't put you off having a couple of quid on Under La Seigneur for Fergal O'Brien, and Paddy Brennan will ride. Perfect trip, perfect ground, over fences, I'm hoping. This has been a long time plan and uh, she can go close in a big race, worth a lot of money, and that's what it's all about. Uh, so all the people that are involved in that, Hopefully it's going to be a fantastic day and Under La Senia can get the job done. Fingers crossed. Do you have a couple of best bets? Yeah, well, I'm sure for all your Under La Senia followers, they're just hoping that you're not going to be there. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to be there. She's every chance she goes close if you're not there. If she's there, I'm afraid there's not a Scoobies. Every single time I watch her from home, she always runs credibly. And in the first few times, I used to go down quite regularly and she'd always run stink. And whenever I didn't go, she'd win. But good for those involved, good for those that are backing her, I will not be at Haydock on Saturday and under La Senia that probably gives her a 35 40% better chance of winning and so under La Senia if she is an each way price I'm not sure what the prices are if she is an each way price I'm talking 7, 8 to 1 plus maybe it could be worth a couple of quid yep well best to look with that uh, Saturday 4.15 Maya Mortal made the case from I think he's the more likely of the two that I mentioned uh, to run in the race I think they might race uh, for a grade one with daily present uh, and on Sunday 3.45 a rated novice chase really like Alice Curran's horse and this Jackson's gold he's been a slow burner over fences this year he's been coming to the boil for a race of this nature he ran very well at this um, at this meeting last year when finishing third in a handicap hurdler he was a really really progressive handicap hurdler last year and he hasn't been as good over fences but he's weighted accordingly and he ran really nicely the last time out I think he could go very close and in the 5.40 on Monday, the three-mile handicap chase just after the Irish National. This is actually a horse, if he got into the Irish National, I'd give a chance to at an enormous price. But he's well down the weights. So I don't think he'll get in. That's a horse called the Dabbler for Liam Cusack. Uh, he was second in the Porter's down behind Smoking Gun. Uh, he's off a mark of 127, I believe. He was brought down the last day. You can look through that. He wants this trip. He wants really good ground. And I think there's more to come from him. And if he's going to run in this... Uh, three mile one race as it was I think that could end up being ideal for him and as much as it's not the huge pot of the Irish National it might be a really nice pot for connections to get obviously slightly smaller connections and I think he'll be an each way price so the dabbler 
he would probably, out of all three, be the best of the lot. That could be a, a cliff horse day for ABW. He's got your, your good old pal Sandor Clagan is also entered in the bumper if he runs. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. We do hope you enjoyed it and we do hope you have a profitable weekend or fairy house. I know fairy house is on the Monday as well. If you do want to see that Cypress vlog, then 300 likes on this video and you will get just that. Look, you've got your head in your hands. You know it's going to be messy, but it could be quite good fun. Um, so if you do want to see that 300 likes, get your comments down below. What's your name? of the weekend we're keen to hear and thank you ever so much for the support subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you soon